Uh, welcome to class, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining class. Hope you all had a good uh, weekend. Yes. Okay, let's begin. Um, let's begin with a word of prayer. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for um, the rest of the weekend. We thank you, God, for your goodness and your faithfulness in our lives. Uh, we thank you that you have uh, enabled us to uh, come in this way, God, to gather in this way, to, to be equipped, to be strengthened, uh, to, so that we can be effective ministers wherever you are calling us, uh, wherever you have placed us, God. We pray that we would be diligent, sincere, uh, that we would serve you, and uh, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we would love you and worship you also, God, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Pray that you would be enthroned, you would be exalted in our lives, in our ministry, Father. God, we thank you that you have given us uh, these very precious lives, these children, these young ones in our hands uh, to nurture, to build up in the faith, uh, um, to pass on the faith to the generations to come, God. And we pray that even as we learn to do so, that you would strengthen us, that you would guide us, that you would enable us and uh, you would uh, teach us, God. We thank you for this class. We commit this class and all of the students into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, last class we were uh, looking at uh, the learning styles. Okay. Uh, and we said that we learn through our uh, five senses. And our five senses are the primary uh, way information goes to our brain. Uh, so when we are teaching, preaching, or having any seminars, it's good to use all of the five senses uh, so that we can get the best out of what we are trying to uh, communicate. Uh, when uh, learning happens with one or more senses, you know, there is uh, better learning that happens. And when you use multiple senses, you reduce boredom in the class. Uh, when you, when there's, uh, you know, there's children are not bored. Uh, they're also less behavioral problems. Okay. So, what are the five uh, different uh, sense uh, organs through which a learning can happen, or what are the five, um, uh, you know. Uh, 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 senses through which learning can take place is uh, learning by hearing, uh, that is uh, auditory learners, uh, learning by seeing, which is uh, visual learners, uh, learning by touch. So we spoke about how we can give uh, people different objects or children different objects uh, that we are, uh, uh, that uh, the narrative has, or also get them to hold the pictures or help you, you know, doing object lessons or just uh, help you to um, put these uh, flannel pictures on the board. So learning by touching. And uh, we also saw that uh, you know, people learn by smell and by taste okay so we looked at these five senses and explained how we could uh, uh, you know uh, have teaching activities or how we can prepare our lessons or our lesson plan uh, using these five senses now there are uh, eight different intelligences or ways of um, learning we looked at that as well we began looking at that and we saw howard uh, gardner uh, so we're looking at howard gardner's uh, eight um, uh, different uh, intelligences or ways of um, learning okay and uh, howard gardner is a professor of education at the harvard graduate school of education he has identified eight different intelligences or uh, ways of learning and uh, this shows us how God has created each one of us uh, to respond uh, in different ways, to respond individually uh, to the different kinds of content, such as uh, language, music, nature, or even through other people. And all of us, you know, uh, uh, even children and all of us as adults possesses all of these eight different gifts or uh, ways of learning. Uh, and these are the linguistic 
uh, ways of learning. That is the word we learn through just hearing or through words. Uh, the logic gift is uh, through logical reasoning, mathematical reasoning. Uh, the spatial gift, that is the picture gift, we learn by seeing. So some people learn better when they see. Um, whether it's videos or pictures or whatever. Then a body gift, that is a kinesthetic uh, gift. A musical gift, uh, uh, so children learn or people learn to, when music is being played in the background. Personal gift through interpersonal relationship. Uh, Self-awareness gift is through intrapersonal relationship and then we have the last gift the eighth one that is a classifying gift which is the naturalist gift so each one of us will have um, you know one or more which will be uh, a dominant gifts uh, which we are able to gather information and learn better uh, so all of us or a child possesses all of these eight gifts but uh, will operate comfortably with one or two gifts, uh, which means that one or two gifts will be dominant than the uh, rest, okay? Uh, so we see that each student's learning style will consist of different combination of uh, these gifts. Uh, just a minute, please. Just give me a minute. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Okay, uh, so we see that uh, each student's uh, learning style uh, will consist of a combination of these gifts. Uh, children learn best uh, when, you know, the classroom activities, the lesson plan, the way the lesson is taught, uh, you know, caters to one or more of their uh, dominant intelligences or their gifts or their style of learning so we uh, you know we should be very uh, aware of these gifts and also not just aware or have information but also include uh, this uh, activities uh, that apply to each of these learning styles as we teach preach or uh, uh, do seminars okay um, and we need to make sure that when we are planning, that we are not planning according to our own dominant styles or the gifts that appeal to us. That can be very uh, disadvantageous to the people that we are sharing because we will try to uh, you know, uh, choose activities, we will choose uh, uh, lessons, uh, or we will plan our lesson, or we'll narrate the, the narrative uh, based on, uh, you know, what best suits our own learning style, but we need to be careful uh, not to fall into the strap, um, uh, but we need to do uh, what is uh, best suits everyone, so at the most include all of these eight um, uh, you know, learning styles or uh, include all of the five natural senses of people's ways of learning uh, in, uh, the, uh, in, your, in your teaching or in your preaching or when you're having um, seminars, okay? Uh, and we need to remember that each child is created in the image of God according to God's perfect uh, plan and hence we need to uh, you know teach them in the best environment that uh, suits them in the way that they it best appeals to them and they are able to uh, receive it well okay so before we uh, stop class last week we looked at uh, the first two um, uh, styles that is the linguistic style or, or the word gift and then uh, we looked at the logical or the mathematical gift that which is the uh, which we said is the logic gift okay so in the linguist or the word gift uh, people or children learn through seeing or hearing uh, words which reminds me that uh, i'll have to present the powerpoint
Okay. So the linguistic or the word gift uh, is basically uh, children learning by seeing and hearing words. Uh, so I said we could show them, um, you know, PowerPoints with, uh, you know, um, uh, pictures of which narrates the story. We could also use videos that we can uh, show them. We could also have, uh, you know, uh, flashcards, uh, uh, which, um, uh, you know, uh, show them this, uh, explain the story to them, which they're able to see and also hear. And also provide them with, um, you know, uh, uh, with the paper and, um, uh, you know, pictures, uh, books in the Bible that they can just see. Um, also have do object lessons for them. Uh, and I also explained uh, last week how we need to have voice modulation, how when we're narrating the story, just not tell the story, but when the person is crying, make a crying tone, uh, facial expression with a crying a facial expression or you know when a person is very happy or very excited you know showing that on your face showing that through your body language uh, so body movements are very important eye contact is very important so that is why it's important that we don't read the story from the bible because when we read it uh, you know we'll be reading it just one tone but it's good to narrate when you're narrating it you know um, uh, do various hand movements, um, like for example, you know, uh, uh, David, you know, put his hand in this, in his bag. He removed the five smooth stones. You can also have smooth stones on your table. Or you can give it to children who learn by touch, uh, you know. And he took it in the sling, and then he, you, you might not have a sling, but then you can say he just, you know, kind of rotated that sling, and he was. Uh, you know, ready to throw the stone and he just threw it and, you know, the stone came right and fell on, uh, on Goliath's um, forehead and it just, this huge giant just fell bang down on the uh, ground, okay? So, uh, you're actually narrating the story and uh, you can be enacting it like a movie scene with, uh, you might not have all the props, like you might not have the bag, you might not have the sling, then you can say, you know, uh, David quickly ran and he, you know, took the Dave, uh, Goliath's sword, it was so heavy, so you're kind of actually lifting it and you just, you know, bend down and cut the head off. Uh, Goliath. So when you're doing this, children with the linguistic or the word gift, um, they are uh, hearing the narration, but there's actually they're seeing a movie. Okay, uh, you're doing it with all the explanation, with all the actions, uh, with the voice modulation, with your facial expression. And it's important to keep um, eye contact, okay, so that when a child is distracted, talking to somebody, is, you can see them dreaming or uh, bored. You know, when you look at them, they know, oh, the teacher's uh, looking at me. So they immediately get back and uh, they are beginning to uh, concentrate okay uh, the next one is uh, is logical or a, a mathematical uh, gift the logic the logic gift and uh, this logic um, gift you know uh, these kind of learners they basically classify or categorize things for understanding for their basic uh, uh, understanding. So these children, they try to understand things through patterns, numbers, uh, equations. Uh, so for them, uh, you know, uh, they're looking for more abstract uh, uh, patterns. So, you know, you when you tell them about uh, uh, the 12 men went to spy on Canaan, you know, 10 of them gave a bad report. So they, you know, they love all of these mathematical uh, things. They understand patterns. You can describe to them, you know, how the, the journey, how they went, what they did. Um, and uh, it's also good for you to give them, you know, activities uh, that would, uh, you know, provide like games and puzzles and also fun mathematical activities that will get them to, uh, you know, like be a, like an attention getter for the class. If you look up the website, you will find uh, various uh, mathematical um, uh, uh, you know, puzzles or quiz that can be good attention getters for your class. And I also showed you uh, 
you know, uh, the whole thing about how, you know, we had the alphabets with the numbers and the numbers were given in the dashes below and they had to uh, write the corresponding um, uh, alphabets, uh, which I had uh, showed you in my uh, previous class, which is basically cryptogram. I hope you all remember the cryptogram that I had showed you. Okay, so... Uh, you can even give them cryptograms or, uh, you know, you want to introduce the topic and so you can just have the cryptogram written on the board or you can have it on your uh, PowerPoint presentation and they can quickly just, you know, correspond the, uh, the, the letters, the alphabets to the numbers and, you know, you have a the attention of these uh, people who learn through the logic gift. Uh, you can also give them a lot of uh, games and puzzles. So your activities can be games and puzzles and also get their attention uh, in the lesson through, uh, you know, giving them various numbers and uh, details because they like it. Okay, so that is the uh, logical uh, gift, the logical mathematical gift and that we saw this um, last week okay now we'll continue with the spatial gift or um, a picture gift the next one is the spatial gift or spatial gift uh, and the the picture gift okay now uh, children learn by looking at pictures colors um, uh, images so we need to provide them you know uh, pictures when they uh, when they are listening to the narrative um, also you can have powerpoint presentation with pictures you can have flannel boards uh, they also can learn through videos but when you are choosing videos you need to be very very careful uh, because you know uh, when i i'm looking for uh, videos on different bible narratives uh, there are some from uh, sites that we don't want to get into because they are not the right sites, um, uh, websites that we need to be looking at. Uh, and also we need to make sure that the narrative given in the video is, uh, is uh, you know, uh, correct in the, uh, the the one that is mentioned in the bible so the bible narrative and the one that is shown in the in the video uh, should you know be matching should be right there can be a little uh, difference but i've noticed that a couple of them have varied uh, differences and uh, you know so uh, good not to use them uh, but what you can do uh, what i have done is you know we can just uh, I have um, actually made uh, uh, PowerPoints of these narratives using these videos. So I just play the video, uh, then pause it and hit print screen and then copy paste that in uh, uh, the PowerPoint. And I have, uh, you know, all the slides uh, ready. So you could even do that, uh, which is very, very uh, interesting uh, for the children. So instead of uh, watching a video that is um, not exact according to the Bible narrative, you already have a PowerPoint uh, that you could show them uh, using these images in this uh, in these videos. Okay. Uh, or if the video is good, of course, you can play it, but play it from the right source and good source and uh, uh, make uh, uh, sure that it is according to the Bible narrative. Uh, and these children also learn uh, by coloring. Um, so you can give them um, coloring sheets, which they can color, and it will just reinforce the whole um, uh, uh, you know, narrative to them. Sometimes even if when you're narrating and they are coloring, you know, they can do two things at a the time. They're coloring, but at the same time, uh, they are also learning as well. Okay, so those are the special uh, learners, those who learn through picture gift. Then we have the next kind of learners who are the kinesthetic kind of learners uh, that is through um, the body gift okay so these children um, learn by moving and uh, touching okay so you see some children they'll not sit tight in their uh, places which you have assigned to them uh, they will kind of fidget or they will just be you know moving around or uh, they will like to touch something so basically we learn you know children learn by uh, touch so basically give them uh, some objects that um, um, 
that uh, you know uh, pertains to the narrative or get them involved in uh, enacting the skit after you narrate it or they can be a character and you sh you know they are there right up in the front and then you can tell them okay uh, this is what goliath uh, this is what david did he went and chose five stones so you can get them to just bend down so you know while um, uh, narrating the story you're narrating it but also you are having these kind aesthetic learners uh you know uh, doing some kind of activity so they are involved or they're engaged in the whole process of uh, learning by touching or by moving and so you can get them to do things um, like for example you know when we, we narrate the lazarus story uh you know we can have uh, one of them uh you know you know, you can just put the whole uh, white cloth or a white sheet, a bedspread or a, a shawl, white shawl over them and, you know, stand outside the uh, door. Um, and when you say Lazarus, when Jesus said Lazarus, uh, get up, you know, you can just, uh, the person just steps into the classroom. And so we have all the kids quite excited about it because they are fully wrapped around in this white shawl or white dupatta or, you know, uh, this uh, white sheet and then you can you know uh, jesus said remove his grave clothes and so you can get other kind of aesthetic learners to come and remove off the uh, their grave clothes or uh, you can just have uh, you know uh, a blind man so you can just have the blind man you know just doing this and acting the child can act like the blind man you can have other kind of aesthetic learners who are the crowd who tell them to keep quiet so just get all of these children involved and um, so you know there is more activity and um, you just teaching or you just telling them they're going to get bored uh, you can get them involved uh, get them to enact them you know sit down uh, listen to uh, a small learning that you're teaching then get them back involved into the uh, whole narrative okay uh, they also learn through physical activities like games and so you can have games and for attention getters um, in the uh, lesson okay so um, their minds retain things better when they are doing something on their own now uh, this is not only in classroom even children at home they behave like this i have a, I had a colleague uh, you know she says when she's teaching her son her son will be uh, you know his head will be on the bed like this and his leg will be on the wall so he is uh, you know upside down and uh, he'll be listening to his mother teaching so she'll be reading out the questions um, and the answers and his head will be down and his leg will be on the wall uh, and straight on the wall and uh, he'll be listening but when she says you know when I ask him for the answers after I taught him he'll tell me all the answers but he just cannot sit in his place right so uh, you know they might just be moving around I have had uh, uh, parents tell me even in children's church that sometimes they're so disappointed and so sad because they see other children uh, sitting and le uh, listening to their teacher but their uh, uh, you know their child is constantly running around picking up things doing things but uh, they were quite amazed when they came back home one day uh, you know they're talking about something and the child you know, uh, said, uh, this is what uh, the children's church auntie said, and this is what Jesus did, and this is what we can do. And they were shocked because they thought their child is basically, the one goes to children's church is basically playing around, uh, not listening, but uh, they realized that the child is actually very active, uh, moving around, but at the same time has been um, listening, okay? Uh, so there are people who do a lot of things uh, moving around. I had one of my uh, classmates in Bible college. Uh, he would come for group studies with no book, uh, nothing to write. Uh, he would just sit down. He will, uh, you know, kind of move around in his chair. Sometimes he will move from one chair to another. Uh, he'll listen and we think he's totally disinterested. He's just come there. But he will just go and write the exam and he passes in all his exams. So that is how his uh, learning style is. Okay, so bod bodily kinesthetic, uh, it's a body kind of uh, body gift where uh, people learn through um, moving and through uh, touch. Okay. And then we have uh, musical learners, the music gift. 
okay they learn through uh, melody rhythm music okay uh, uh i have one of uh, one girl who comes and who's living in a hostel here her parents stay away from home so she comes during holidays and um, uh you know now when there's a lockdown because the lockdown they uh, the college is not happening it's happening online so she's at home but uh, she learns by listening to music you know uh, so her uh, phone is uh, she's plugged in uh, music uh, this worship or songs running in the background and she's studying and for me it's totally opposite you know um, uh, yesterday she was in the room with me and i was preparing for my three classes today and uh, 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 she was looking at some videos and then uh, she wanted to just uh, do some studies so um she said can i play music so i didn't want to say no to her so i said okay because but i knew that it's going to disturb me uh but she's playing music and she's perfectly studying but for me i am not able to concentrate but because for me it has to be perfectly quiet so that i can read and understand and then i told her can you please put your mobile that side so that the voice volume is a little more less so you see that you 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 just can't uh, understand how they uh, they can concentrate okay they can learn with the music in the background but they perfectly do that i had uh, uh, one of my uh, younger sister's friend uh, an excellent student uh, you know uh, uh, does very well comes in the between the first five ranks in school but she will be constantly listening to music while she's studying even during exam time so these are the musical learners they learn better when there is noise there's music there's rhythm um, happening in the background um, so i would like to ask uh, how uh, we can engage students like this but because um, there's some or problem with my audio you you can't uh, i can't hear you speak um so i can't ask this question but uh, basically if you can just type it in the chat it will help or if somebody just wants to speak uh maybe it's working back again if anyone wants to say something how we can help these uh, uh people or children with music gift when we're teaching them no response hello class we can, you there? we can do ma'am some uh, practical things okay kiran sorry i uh, we tried but uh, we can't hear you maybe if you want to type it in the chat uh, you could do so sorry for uh, that problem i don't know the first two hours uh, it worked perfectly fine i could hear the students but i don't know this hour uh, not able to hear you all okay uh, practical activities okay like what are some of the practical activities that we can have okay keyboard uh, just get the uh, you know uh, keyboard or uh, what you can do is also a record you know uh, yeah you can have the keyboard you can have other instruments thank you kiran anyone else maybe what you can do is you know when um, uh, uh, yeah singing you can have worship for them yes get them to sing cuz they will really like it uh you know we have uh, uh, we can get different sounds uh, for the narrative that we are saying for example you know there was a sound of uh, the wind and the waves uh, you know when when jesus stills the storm narrating that you can have that or when you're talking about blind man bartimaeus story you can talk about uh, you can have a crowd noise of a crowd you can just play that or uh, uh you know also jonah in the uh, thrown into the sea there was a storm you can have a uh, sound of storm uh, you know uh, jonah being drowned in the sea or uh, in the belly of the fish when he cries out to god so all of these sounds you can have in the background uh, you can play it for them uh, but if it's uh, difficult basically you can have um, you can cater to their needs by teaching them uh, 
you know uh, scripture and song uh, there are some uh, songs that uh, talk about different narratives like for example we have uh, the story of uh, zacchaeus in a song uh, we have also uh, the blind man story part of it you know the blind man sat by the road and he cried the blind man sat by the road and he cried the blind man sat by the road and he cried he cried oh ho oh, oh, ho show me the way so basically you know just uh, breaking out into songs so they are going to be excited uh, this uh, also um, a jonah story which is in song uh, the fruit of the spirit uh, which is also in song so children can learn the fruit of the spirit uh, just by learning the song uh, there are various uh, short choruses um, uh, which uh, are scripture in song so you can teach them uh, memory verse uh, you know um, uh, the songs to this uh, you know uh, Uh, by using the scripture in song so you can basically get help from uh, uh, youtube you can look up uh, these things you can if you're not a good singer or uh, you've not learned it you can just play it and these musical learners uh, children who learn through uh, hearing children who learn through um, music children who learn to sing can see the video and they can just pick up and they can also uh, learn uh, very well okay so um, this have some music also play in the background which will also help oh, uh, best way to teach memory verse is memory verse in song uh, you can look up if there are any songs based on that scripture passage or the memory verse or you can put a small familiar uh, song to the memory verse uh, tune to the memory verse sorry and you can teach them the song okay then we have the interpersonal uh, learners uh, those who have uh, the personal gift uh they basically learn with the uh, cooperating with others interpersonal okay they learn by cooperation with others so they learn to um, you know they love to work in teams they love to work in groups uh, sharing information comparing ideas with each other and you see some children they constantly will be chatting with others uh, i don't know if you've noticed this or you have uh, people who are constantly uh, uh, chatting with each other or you know when you are preaching or teaching there are people who constantly will be responding to what you're saying like say hallelujah praise the lord uh, yes pastor come on preach it uh, uh, that's so true you know uh, so these people just can't sit quietly they are interpersonal learners they 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 learn best by Uh, communicating by sharing uh, uh, you know uh, just speaking out um, uh, you know and also they like to uh, uh, share information they like to compare ideas with each other so we'll see basically you know the child will be chatting happily with their neighbor and you might be uh, a little irritated or upset that the child is uh, constantly talking but this child is basically you know learning through interpersonal personal gift of talking or uh, discussing with the others so they're basically discussing what you have just said in the previous point say you know yeah this is what happened in my school uh, uh you know this is what uh, this child did or this is what i did exactly what uh, uh, she's saying or what she's talking uh, but you know it can be very disturbing so the best way to engage uh, these kind of learners uh, rather than them being a disturbance to the child and they missing out and the other child missing out on the points and you not being able to uh, you know not liking this kind of an environment you can get them to you know uh, give their viewpoints you can say okay i think uh, tanya has uh, something to say tanya why don't you share it with all of us uh, what do you think about this point um, you know the child might be a little shy but uh, you know you can just uh, encourage a child to speak we would like to hear your viewpoint and all of that so constantly keep engaged uh, engaging these children also have group activities group games get them involved in uh, uh you know uh in in activities like skits or uh, debates or uh, uh quiz group discussion uh, even when they're doing craft activity they would like to do it with somebody else they would like to talk and chat or uh, talk about the colors what would be best what is good and all of those things so uh get them uh, into a, a you know in a style where they are best comforted uh, uh, find it comfortable in learning uh, 
also keep engaging in talking to them, discussing with them, asking their viewpoints so that they are constantly engaged in telling you or sharing with the rest of the class what they think and what they feel. Now, uh, the opposite of interpersonal uh, kind of learners, those with personal gifts are the opposite of that is intrapersonal. Uh, or the self-awareness gifts. These children learn best when they are left um, alone. Um, you know, they love to learn by themselves. They have, like their own private space. So you will see these kind of children, you know, they will just go right at the back of the class. Uh, they will sit there. They will sit uh, away from uh, the rest of the other learners. Uh, and um, But they will listen. And when you have uh, kind of group games or group activities, or when you want to do a skit, uh, they might not want to come up in the front. They might not want to, um, you know, speak, engage in the skit or in the activity uh, or uh, do anything that, you know, you're doing in the front with the group. It's okay. Let them be because they were just like sitting back, just observing, just enjoying what others um are doing give them their own um, uh, space and they will learn best but if you force them tell them no you have to come and do the skit you have to uh, sing along uh, with the rest of them in the front you have to do this then it will totally kind of uh, uh, disappoint them they might not even want to come back to class because it is not appeasing their kind of uh, uh, you know a style of learning okay and then we have the the naturalists uh, who learn through nature, the natural environment, which is the last eighth gift. Uh, so these are the naturalists, the classifying gift. These learners learn by classifying. Uh, so in any of the other ways, their minds ret retain information. Uh, whether they're sitting in the classroom, they're listening to lectures, they're watching, uh, you know, movies, educational movies, they're going on field trips, they're studying alone in their rooms, or even when they're performing in the, in the group study, they learn through these different ways. And they learn best uh, through experimentation, experimenting things, and through practical uh, methods okay uh, so experiment and practical methods uh, i i i gave you two examples last week about demonstration where i demonstrated the you know uh, when we give we receive more it does not that we lose out so you know i use the scissors and cut off the uh, the ends and we saw that i had more uh, corners than when I began with four. Uh, we also, I also showed you about uh, how they can love and value themselves irrespective of uh, what they have done, whether they're good or bad. And I crushed the paper and basically resembled uh, 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 money, uh, currency note. And I said that it's still valuable irrespective of whether it's crushed or it's trampled on the floor. We can still take it to the shop and we can buy something with that currency uh, note. So uh, these children learn through experiments, practical methods. So you can even do object lessons with them. Uh, the next class when we are talking about uh, how to write a lesson plan, uh, we will look at how uh, you know, what an object lesson is and how to basically use different objects uh, to communicate different truths. Uh, so um, uh, when I do lesson plans, which I begin, which I'll begin uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, you know, you can involve these children in doing these object lessons, basically small experiments. Uh, you know, using water, using objects, using glasses, um, which they can um, learn. And, you know, they learn best through outdoor activities. So you can get also the children out uh, to just play a game or sun, bring them back and also use a lot of experiments and practical methods to um, teach them. Okay. So these are the eight uh, different, um, uh, you know, gifts that each one of us have, and one or two will be more dominant. So we look at the linguistic, the word gift, logical or mathematical, which is the logic gift, the spatial, which is the uh, 
a picture gift. We saw the bodily or the kinesthetic, which is the body gift, the musical, the music gift, interpersonal, personal gift, and the intrapersonal, which is a self-awareness gift. They learn best left to themselves. And the natural, naturalistic uh, learners, which learn through classifying. Uh, the various um, uh, the classifying gift which they learn through various uh, means by uh, demonstration uh, experiments and when they are best left in the uh, nature to discover things or through outdoor activities okay so these uh, is briefly the different styles of learning so you could use this when you are teaching children can also please go ahead and use it when you're preaching and teaching. Uh, I um, get a lot of object lessons from one preacher, uh, you know, who preaches in a church in the U.S., I think, and he, every, uh, most of his sermons, he demonstrates. He uses different objects, very creative way. Uh, he brings out the truth. So, you know, uh, so even when you're preaching, uh, you can use object lessons um, uh, to preach or to your seminars. You can use images, uh, you can use PowerPoints and uh, get people's um, attention. Okay. I'll stop here. Uh, any of you have any questions, please uh, feel free and type it in the chat section. Uh, we have uh, four more minutes, so you feel free to type it in the chat section or uh, you have any comments, anything you didn't understand, uh, I can explain. Uh, please go ahead and uh, use this time now to ask it. You can type it in the chat section. Any doubts, any questions? Any comments? Was this uh, learning styles helpful for, to you all? Were you all able to identify your own learning styles? Maybe you can type out your answer in the chat section. Okay. I got only one response. What about the others? Okay, if um, you have no questions, uh, no doubts. Okay, Aaron says, is there any special learning about a special child? Yeah, uh, we have um, a special uh, children and they have a separate uh, school uh, for them. Uh, they are even in the normal the schooling the normal school they don't have go to a school where uh, we have other children but they have a special school for them they are taught in a different uh, way yes and there are people who are specifically trained uh, to teach uh, special children with physical and mental disabilities uh, yes we have to go through a special training to teach them uh, so we have special schools with special teachers uh, who cater to their learning styles, yes. Even uh, children in normal schools um, who go to normal schools and, um, uh, you know, uh, but uh, they are slow learners um, uh, or they can have uh, problems like dyslexia. Uh, and other learning disabilities, then, you know, nowadays, thankfully, schools in India have begun to have uh, separate classes for them uh, where they are taught uh, differently and uh, they need a special way of training them, teaching them. Uh, uh, I know my cousin also, you know, she teaches children who go to normal schools, but they have a dyslexic or slow learners. Uh, and she has a different style of teaching them because she's been trained in them. Yes. Uh, in our children's church, we had a special child who used to come. Uh, of course, she her age was uh, way up, but she would always be in grade one, you know. Uh, and uh, we would just welcome her and... Um, you know, she would uh, just be there, a very quiet child. Of course, she passed away. Uh, wonderful child, very beautiful child. Uh, 
yeah, she would be there in grade one and would, I would always welcome her and, you know, uh, and the children, the teachers is to be, uh, you know, um, uh, pay more attention to her, give her attention and also be sensitive and cater to her needs. Yes. Okay, thank you, Erin, for that question. But these children will be helped if you can give them special, you know, coaching, special training separately. Okay, thank you everyone for joining class today. I'll see you tomorrow and we'll begin uh, the next topic about how to prepare a lesson plan. And with that, uh, you know, we will uh, we'll end this whole uh, children's ministry. And then from March uh, onwards, March and April, uh, Pastor Roshan will uh, take you through um, youth ministry. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining. Have um, a blessed day and a blessed week ahead. God bless all of you. And... Uh,